our devotion. And I got my water here and my tea here, so I'm I'm just in heaven. So let me go ahead and uh, list you guys here. That is. there. All right. Let's grab this hymn book and get started. All right. I, this is a good one. That's a perfect one given what I'm going to need to share after we get done. This is perfect. 156. Selection 156 in your hymn books. All right, let's go here in Facebook and put that in as well. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, but when we start singing, we, I should mute my mic, right? Yes. Okay. But I'm going to mute it now. All right. Oh, Rhonda's back. That's good. Okay, here we go. Selection 156, everybody. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Verse 5. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Boy, that one couldn't have come at a more appropriate time. All right, let's find another one in our Baptist hymn books. All right, how about... I think I'm going to go to a different one. Well, I'll stick with what I was going to do. Selection 167. Make sure everybody online knows where we are. 167 there. And on Facebook. Yes, it did. Let me try it again. Selection. Oh, it did do it. Yep, I see it right there. All right. 167. Just as I am and thou one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee, 
whose blood can cleanse each battle lamb of God. I come, I come. Amen. All right, Deacon Jones, you want to go ahead and pray us in? Father, we come before you this evening, this full of thanksgiving and praise, Father, thanking you for being our God and praising your holy name for looking after us and bringing us this forth. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for bringing us to your house of prayer and through the virtue, through the social media. And Father, we just thank you for all of our fellow, fellow. Uh, uh, Calvary members and others who are with us this evening. Yeah. We pray, Father, that uh, we will all get something from this lesson that will enable us to go throughout this week and to deal with whatever we have to deal with. It. Father, we pray for the sick and the shut in. We ask forgiveness for any and all sins that we committed. And Father, we ask that you let your spirit reside with us this evening. Speak to us through your vessel and enable us to just just get everything the way it should be. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. We all in agreement said amen. Amen. Okay, our next selection is 181. 181, Pass Me Not. Pass Me Not, 181. I see you, Sister Rita West. Let me know if you're going to be coming to Calvary this Saturday for uh, uh, Sister Vyrie Johnson's service. I would uh, be interested to know if you're going to be able to make that service. All right. Okay. All right. A.V. Johnstone is in the house. Good to see you, Sister Avi. Where's her name? Right there. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, Rhonda. All right, we're going to do selection 181. You all ready? I don't see Sherlin yet. All right. Here we go. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm calling Savior. Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me at a throne of mercy find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep contrition help my unbelief i'm calling savior savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by amen at this time let's see if we can get another selection we've got uh, Let's see, what 
Here's another one that we can use. All right. This is a good one, 198. Let's type that in. Right, selection 198. And let's put this on YouTube. All right, Mary Jackson's in. I surrender all. Okay. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender all. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All right, Sister Rita. I don't know if you're going to be with us on uh, Saturday or not, but we are going to be celebrating the life of one of your family members. All right, the next one is Selection 202. And that'll take us right on in. Selection 202. Let's put it on. I don't see anybody on YouTube yet. Although there are two viewers. I'll take that back. Three viewers. Selection 202 on Zoom. All right, here we go. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, there's Sarah Thompson. I knew I was going to see somebody peek through. All right, Sarah is in the hizzle. 
And I'm sure Mama Nurse and the rest of NIMS will be on in a minute. Now, you should already have received the lesson because I emailed it to just about everyone that I have an email address for. So that means if you gave me your email address, I emailed it already. If not, uh, you can uh, expect it to be attached momentarily when my baby sister uh, joins us. All right. Well, it looks like Mama Nurse is on Facebook instead of YouTube. How did that happen? <laughs> All right. So let's see who's all with us on Facebook. Let's get everybody in there. All right. There she is, Mary Jackson, Ernestine Williams, Bernice, your sister Ernestine, and Ruby are with us today. Ruby Davis and Wanda Talton is on Facebook this time. All right, no problem. And uh, don't forget, Wanda, I emailed you already the document and you gotta text me Valerie Jones' email address and I can forward it to her as well. All right, so all of us have been to the store before, and I know I'm right. And you've been to a store that had a sale before. I know I'm right there. So if, if, uh, if you believe that I'm on point thus far, uh, I need y'all to go ahead and type in yes, Y-E-S. I have been in a store and I have been a part of a sale. If you're not able to type, just give me a thumbs up sign and I get it. All right. Here they, they coming on in. Yes, yes. All right, so you've been to a store and you've been to a sale. Now, many of us know that uh, we have experienced a good deal, which means that you buy one get one free. Now, if you have ever received a deal like that, buy one, get one free, all you gotta do is type in B-O-G-O, 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 buy one, get one free. All right, B-O-G-O, buy one, get one free. And if you have received a buy one, get one free, and you're not able to type, let me see another thumbs up sign, and then I know, there we go. All right, yes. All right, so that, that means, um, <laughs> Sarah, am I alone? Well, no, you got three people viewing, Sister Sarah, uh, and I believe one of them is Aaron McDonald. So, uh, and he doesn't type, uh, so that's, it's all well and good, Sister Sarah. If you got, uh, if you over there, there are two more persons watching alongside you. So you're not by yourself. All right. And Val Gal's going to be with you in a minute, Valerie Jones. Okay. All right. So we know what it is to get a buy one, get one free. Uh, that means if you bought a handbag, you got another handbag for free. If you purchased a pair of shoes, you got another pair of shoes for free. If you bought a watch, you got another watch for free. If you bought a pair of earrings, you got another pair of earrings for free. Uh, if you bought a scarf, you got another scarf uh, for free. There she is, Valerie Jones is on uh, YouTube. I told you she'd be right there, Sister Sarah. You ain't gonna be by yourself. All right, and so I've already given credit to Aaron McDonald because I know he's there as well. Okay, so Deaconess Valerie Jones, if you have uh, purchased one thing and got something for free, I know you want to type in yes for me. I know you want to do that. Now, tonight's lesson is a buy one, get one free. Hallelujah. Let me do a little sip of water. Buy one, get one free. And uh, here's your worksheet. 
I'm going to share it on Zoom for those that are on Zoom. <laughs> for those that are not on Zoom, what's going to have to happen is you will, um, uh, you, you will uh, have to check your email because I emailed it to most of you. All right? All right, so Joel is on side one. Obadiah is on side two. And we're going to push through these two tonight because you bought one you won't get the other one free. We're going to finish both books tonight. Amen. Even if I'm the only one saying amen, it's all good. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at side. Uh, now, for those that are on Zoom, I'm going to just share my screen. And when I share my screen, you're going to be able to see it. Here we go. Joel. Can y'all see that on Zoom? So if you want to be on Zoom, let me, where's my, do I have it? Yep, there it is. If you want to be on Zoom, uh, I'll be able to share the document and you can see it in real time. You don't have to worry and wait until I email it to you. So let me give you the Zoom codes. And if you ever want to switch to Zoom, our Zoom codes are right here. I'm going to type them in now. 571 600 3116 and code Calvary with a capital C. All right, so I'm going to send that to you. All right, good. Let's go over to Facebook and do the same thing. All right, so if you decide you want to jump on to uh, Zoom at any time, You'll be able to do that, and we, any document that I bring up going forward, I'll be able to share it real time on Zoom, okay? And uh, if you've got your email, all you got to do is print it out, and you're already with us. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to start with uh, Joel. And if you have not found Joel yet, Joel is right after Hosea, and Hosea follows Daniel, and, and uh, let's see who else is before. Uh, yeah, right after Daniel is Hosea, and then Joel follows that, okay? All right. Okay, let's look at Joel. <laughs> All right, his name means Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. Okay? And in the book of Joel, there are four... Well, let me get to this part first. Okay, in the book of Joel we discover that there are some enemies that are named in his book. And they are these. They are the Phoenicians, Philistines, Egyptians, and Edomites. Okay, I'll read those again. Phoenicians, Philistines, Egyptians, and Edomites. And uh, later, Assyria and Babylon would be added in. Okay? Now, uh, this book uh, has four prophecy 
lessons. Oh, there's Deacon Robert Stevenson. I thought he was going to goose egg me tonight. And you should have the uh, thing as well, Deacon Robert. Okay, well, let me find Robert Stevenson. There you are. And he's on YouTube. Okay, so the four prophecies would be uh, uh, a type of the day of the Lord. And we remember that the day of the Lord is when, uh, is, is identified as the day that God uh, vindicates good over evil or the day when uh, Jesus uh, comes back for the second coming. Uh, the other would be uh, whenever something significant is happening and God is involved. Okay? So one prophetic type focuses on the day of the Lord. The other is the day of the Lord. So when it's the day of the Lord, we're talking about when Jesus comes back for his church without spot or wrinkle. Okay, so the third prophecy is the judgment of the nations. The judgment of the nations. And the fourth prophecy is the full blessing of the kingdom of Israel. The full blessing of the kingdom of Israel. Okay? So, as we look at uh, Joel, we will discover that um, chapters 1 and most, or a portion of chapter 2, focuses on vegetation vegetation and what uh, is happening is that the land is being consumed just like the people of God are being consumed and when I say people of God I'm really talking about Israel and Judah so the land is being consumed just like like Israel is being consumed okay Now, if we look at verse 1 from chapter 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to Joel, son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation, that... Uh, which the palm, palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust, locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar eaten. Okay, so what he's saying is that um, be, this is the land that was known as the land overflowing with milk and honey. And now it's being decimated, meaning that God's protection over the land has been exhausted. And since his protection over the land has been exhausted, God has now decided to allow uh, Earth's creatures to consume the plant life. So collard greens and corn and uh, cabbage, and uh, strawberries, and watermelon, or how we say it, wallamela, wallamela, <laughs> okay, okay, all of these, uh, I see you, Deacon Aaron McDonald, I see you coming on through, uh, all of these have been consumed, and whatever one animal group has left, another animal group has taken over. So you see that uh, m many of us have uh, been where we've uh, had a salad 
uh, probably from like a farmer's market type place, uh, a place where there is, a, you know, where you know it came right off the ground, it's on your plate. Um, and, and I don't really do, I do salads, but I don't necessarily do farmer's market salads that much because technically you really are just buying the lettuce that you take it home and then you have to, you know, pull it apart and do all that. Uh, when I get a salad, I like it to be already made. So uh, I'm not trying to sell it, the idea, but my salad is generally going to be prepackaged. Let me just put it that way. So, but if you walk with me for a second, you go to a market where there are farmers out there, you get your, uh, you know, and maybe they have a little shop where you can sit down and eat and they will prepare your salad for you. Okay, I'm trying to pick that kind of scenario up. And as you get ready to eat, you notice that, that you ain't the first one that started eating because you see bite marks on your lettuce. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, the lettuce has already started to be consumed by a creature. And by the time you get it, you know that uh, you're not the first bite. All right, so what, what is happening here is that the, the uh, vegetation that's being consumed is being consumed by multiple creatures so that by the time you think you're ready to, to, to go pick that head of lettuce or cabbage or whatever, there's really nothing to pick. Now, there's a story about a person that uh, bit into an apple and discovered that, uh, oh my goodness, there was a worm there uh, and he says, oh, I'm so happy that uh, I caught it. And he threw it away. And then his friend says, uh, well, I got one better for you. What if you bit into the apple like I did and only saw half a worm? <laughs> Whoa, okay, I'm going to take a sip on that one. So it's better to catch the full worm if you bite an apple rather than to only catch a half. And I'll let you do the math, okay? All right. So, um, so both the land and the people will be consumed because God has moved his hedge of protection. All right? So this goes all the way into chapter 2, right? So chapter 2 uh, all the way up to verse 11 to be exact. All right, is where uh, uh, it uh, ends for vegetation. Now, chapters 1 and 3 are the vengeance of the Lord. Chapters 1 and 3 are the vengeance of the Lord. Okay? All right, now I'm going to jump to the victory in chapter uh, 2. We're going to start at verse 12 and all the way down to verse 32, okay? All right, and we're going to pick up victory again from another, from the next chapter. All right, so in uh, uh, chapter 2, starting at verse 12, it says, and I see some uh, data stream coming in at me from Facebook, so let me make sure I check in. All right, so that is... Uh, Family, talking to family, which is great. Uh, let's make sure I'm not missing anyone's comment. All right. So far, so good. All right, so A.V. Johnstone, she just gave me her email address. Let me see if I can forward this to you real quick while I'm getting ready. Let's go here. See if I can do this really quick. Sent mail. Forward. Include attachments. All right, A.V. Let me. A.V. Johnstone 12. There you go. Sent. All right. Okay, so read, starting at verse 12. It reads, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart 
and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of a great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. So what God is saying is that all you guys need to do is stop doing this stupid stuff and turn back to worshiping me, give up your idols, not, do not bow down to them anymore, do not acknowledge them anymore, throw them away, burn them, get rid of them, and I will get rid of all this mess. But if you don't, then you're going to continue to be in the cesspool that you are in. Okay? And so he's sharing you know, how he's going to give them the victory, right? So he's going to release them from the burden. He's going to deliver them from being uh, oppressed. Uh, he's going to allow them to once again have a land overflowing with milk and honey. He's going to remove the reproach, and he's going to allow the vines to yield their strength Fruit trees bearing fruit, fig trees bearing figs, uh, vines bearing grapes, and all of the good thing. And he's going to send down rain so that it will water the vegetation so that it will grow. All right, so that's the victory you find in uh, chapter 2. And then he does something else. All right, well, let me, let me just tie this off. Verse 26 in chapter 2, look what it says. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed, right? So he's given them both victory and vindication. So what you write for victory, you're going to also write, let me just go to vindication. Chapter 2, verses 12 through 32, and chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. Both of those go in the spot of victory and vindication. Now, what is about to be read from this point forward is online with Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 21. So, Joel 2, 28 through 32 is almost equivalent to Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21. When you read it, you will see that they are practically identical. So let's go through it real quick. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So when God pours out uh, on all flesh, now what he's saying here is going to be viewed and received and stated again in Acts. Now, he says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Well, we already know that there were prophets and prophetesses already. For you remember that Deborah was a prophetess. Miriam was a prophetess. Isaiah's wife was a prophetess. All right? Those we know clearly, and there were others. I'm just trying to call the ones that I can say with all certainty. And we also know that there were prophets because we're dealing with the prophets right now, right? Moses was known as a prophet. Certainly Samuel would qualify as a prophet. Um, and so what he's saying, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, has already happened and continues to happen. All right, mama nurse, I finished my water. I finished two bottles. Now I'm going for dessert. My sweet tea from Pure Leaf. Amen. Let me go ahead and pour it because yum yum is good. All right. Okay. 
So uh, what he says about they shall prophesy uh, is restated in Acts. And we recognize that God has not uh, eliminated any group. The male and the female were prophesied. Okay? Then he makes a shift. Now, um, he says, Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now, um, he does not include uh, the uh, females on the dreaming dreams and seeing visions both here and in Acts. And uh, this is not something that we're looking for debate on. It just states it, and I'm going to state it matter-of-factly because I know that there are people, certainly those in the feminist movement, that will challenge this, but the Bible doesn't say anything different. So because the Bible does not say say anything different, I'm not going to say anything different here, okay? I'm just lifting what the scripture is saying, that God makes a shift on who's going to dream dreams and who's going to see visions, all right? Then he goes, verse 30, and I will show wonders in the heavens, excuse me, 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. So he's pouring out his spirit on the male and the female, and the male and the female shall prophesy. And then he says again, I will pour out my spirit. In Acts, he says, I will pour out of my spirit, which is a slight difference, but he still points to the same idea, is that he's Make, making his, his Holy Spirit available to everyone. Now, notice he doesn't say that I will pour out my Spirit only on the believers. Let me make sure y'all let that sink in. Say la. He does not say I'm going to pour out my Spirit only on Christians. He said on all flesh. Do y'all see that? All flesh. All flesh. That's good and bad. Uh, the indifferent, that's the saved, the unsaved. He's going to pour the Spirit out on all flesh. And um, he's going to make his Spirit available to everyone that will receive his Spirit. Now, the, the way that this is poured out, i got to explain it in a way that I think we can all see visually what happens. Okay. You've all been where, uh, let's say, if you've got a dog or a cat, and you throw him in the swimming pool, uh, you know that he's going to be soaked, all right? So the Holy Spirit is going to fall in such a way that we get soaked in the Holy Spirit. Now, you've noticed that when, you t when the dog or the cat gets out of the pool, it shakes profusely, to get as much water off it as possible. This is what the unbeliever will do. They will shake the Holy Spirit off, not because the Holy Spirit didn't land. They just didn't want the Holy Spirit on them for whatever reason. And I'll, I'll use this example to kind of help frame that out. As you know, uh, I was in Tacoma, Washington, doing street witnessing uh, a few weeks ago. And when we got to the People's Park in Tacoma, uh, it was known for a number of things that needed evangelism to walk through that park. And we noticed that as we walked upon the people and said, we're willing to offer you free prayer, we'll just pray uh, for anyone willing to receive prayer. That's how we got started with every individual. If you, if you have anything you want us to pray over, just let us know and we'll pray for you right here, right now. And we, I noticed that there were some guys that were tiptoeing, backstepping away from us. Um, 
And our crew did go back and gather them and have a conversation with them. But they, they didn't run away, but they just tiptoed off. Like we were, our attention was, was on the ones we were looking at, and there were these others on the side that just kind of exited stage left. They just kind of uh, moved out of our view. And when we got to them and asked them, uh, is there anything that we can pray for them on, uh, m m most of them, their response was, I don't feel comfortable because of the way I am or because of what I just did or, uh, uh, I'm, I, you know, th th it was more like there was a discomfort rather than we don't want your Jesus. And so when you have a person that is living in the world and loving living in the world, they're living in sin or they're enjoying drugs or enjoying alcohol or enjoying, uh, you know, a seedy or dirty or a darkened lifestyle, when light comes upon it, darkness cannot comprehend it and must leave. Darkness is looking for a way of escape rather than a way into the family of God. So um, while we were happy that no one just abjectly rejected us, that was what was happening. So uh, God said, I'm going to pour, not, not drip, not drop, not, uh, 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 you know, uh, sprinkle. He says, I'm going to pour. And if you saw me pour, right? Let me make sure this is close. If you saw me pour uh, my tea into this cup, I poured it till it was full, right? So when the Holy Spirit comes up on us, he wants to come up on us and fill us. Now, guess what? One of the other reasons why those persons didn't want the Holy Spirit that we were bringing with us when we were witnessing was because while we were full of the Spirit, they were full of something else. Say that! And if you want to be full of the Spirit of God, you must first be empty. You got to be willing to empty yourself so that you can uh, receive what God has for you. All right, I want to make sure no one tried to get in while I was talking, which, no, they did. All right, so it says, um, uh, upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens, and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. So we know that the presence of God is there when you see uh, fire and pillars of smoke. When you see blood, you know that the, it is the blood of Jesus that, uh, you know, will allow us. That's part of how the Spirit comes to us is because the blood of Jesus shows that he passed away. And Jesus said, it is good that I leave because when I go, I will send you another comforter who will guide you to all truth. That is the Holy Spirit, okay? That's why in Acts it says, and ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All right? But he says, God says through Joel, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And those that will accept him Right? Like, look at the Apostle Paul. He was as bad as bad gets. But when the Spirit uh, interacted with him on the Damascus Road, he became a part of the family of God. How did that work? It works because while no one officially evangelized Paul, he joins the family of God because the Spirit of God landed on him when he was uh, introduced to Jesus while he was on his way to persecute and prosecute more Christians, okay? So, uh, the blood of Jesus comes against any and every person that would challenge the work of Jesus and the work of the cross, all right? 
So he says, verse 31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Right? So we're, we're looking at the final days, you know, when the second coming of Christ happens. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Now, when you see it in X, shall be saved. Right? Because in this case, you call on the name of the Lord, you need deliverance because they're about to go into captivity. When you get into the book of Acts, you shall be saved because you're saved from your sins. Okay? All right, and then it says, For in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said in the remnants of whom the Lord shall call. So he's going to have a remnant after <coughs> he has done all of the good work. And as I stated earlier, chapter 3, it says God will judge the nations, right? That's victory, chapter 3, 16 through 21, but it's also vindication because, again, he will uh, offer uh, uh, vindication in chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. But vengeance, he will offer, chapter 3, Verses 1 through 15. <clears throat> All right? Now, you notice buy one, get one free. So that means we're done with Joel. Now we're going to go to Obadiah. Now, if you keep turning your Bible, you're going to pass Amos. You're going to pass famous Amos. And when you land on Obadiah, it's only one chapter long. It's a short book. All right? And I got about seven minutes, which is plenty for me to do Obadiah. And again, remember that the Obadiah and Joel come in just around the time that the Assyrian captivity is about to begin. Okay? All right. So in the book of Obadiah... Okay, his name means servant of God or worshiper of God. Servant of God or worshiper of God. Okay. And not only are Assyria and uh, Babylon going to be enemies, but he focuses primarily on Edom as the enemy. Okay. All right, and we already studied who the Edomites are and how they're related. So if you've got your worksheets, you already have that data. All right, and since I only have about six more minutes, I don't want to go all the way back. If there's time at the end, I can go back and deal with all of the enemies of God and how they're related to the Israelites. Okay. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, focuses on vengeance. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, focuses on vengeance. Starting at verse 15 through 21, victory and vindication. 15 through 21, victory and vindication. All right? So beginning reading at verse 1, it says... The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath delivered thee, that thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So God says, Y'all gonna be humbled. You sitting up there high and uh, Think that you're all that. When I get done with you, 
you're going to be on the ground. Right? So that's vengeance. God is coming after them. Okay? And look at verse 10. It says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So because they were a thorn in the side of the Israelites, God's going to make them pay. Right? All right, verse 11. And the, and the day that thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the stranger carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast one of them. So it says, when all this bad stuff was happening to the people of God in Jerusalem and in, in, in Israel and Judah, y'all were looky-loos and y'all were the ones that were uh, part of the problem. So now, when I get done with you, you ain't going to be sitting high no more. You're going to be low. All right? So we'll do a few verses of the victory uh, and vindication that's going to come. Okay? Uh, starting at verse 15, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So he says, I'm going to give everything that they lost back, and uh, you guys are going to be gone. Okay? So um, that is uh, our lesson. I got one minute to spare, and I'm grateful for being able to do that. Uh, I'm going to ask Dorothy Cox, Mary Jackson. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Lily Gilmer. Rhonda Washington to jump quickly on Zoom because we're going to uh, share some information about the service coming up this Saturday. And I'm not going to put it on Facebook. And same with you, Sarah Thompson and Robert Stevenson. You guys need to go to Zoom really quickly. All right. Sarah Thompson and Robert Stevenson. All right. I need you guys to log in. Only those people. Right. Because um, we want to uh, get ready for our service on Saturday. So uh, I've got a quick announcement. I shared an announcement earlier today at, during the daytime Bible study. So I want you guys to come on over real quick. And I forgot to show you guys Obadiah. Let me show those on, uh, on Zoom Obadiah real quick. So you see that I had a vengeance, victory, and vindication. All right, stop share. And then the rest, I'm going to ask them to come over. Deacon Jones, I need you to pray us out on the social media front. And uh, hopefully the others will be on Zoom momentarily. All right? Go ahead and unmute yourself, Deacon Jones. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've given us so far. And now, Father, we ask that we are preparing to go into another portion of our study. We ask that you let your spirit continue to be with us, Father. We welcome our brothers and sisters into this social media. And as we uh, prepare to uh, continue with this portion of the lesson, Father, we just ask for your blessing and keeping us um, focused on what we're here for. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone on Facebook and YouTube, we will see y'all at the next go-around. God bless you. And those that are on uh, Zoom, you stay right there.